Welcome back. As you can see, this isn't the normal setup. We are standing, for starters, uh, and that's because I'm going to be moving a lot in this video, and so are you. I'm gonna be taking you with me. So I know I usually do weekly tutorials on here, but to keep things a little unpredictable and also throw in other content in case you aren't looking for a tutorial, I figured let's do something else. And over on Patreon, you guys agreed you'd like to see other content. Specifically, you guys wanted to see what the studio looked like. This might not be the longest video because it's kind of short and sweet, but it has everything that I need. I have it sectioned off into three areas. I guess we can just start left to right. So. Uh, um, yeah, let's begin. Let's clip this thing on. I don't like the cord showing, but oh well. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that this is like a vlog camera when in reality this weighs like 50 pounds and my arm already really hurts. Let's start at the editing station where I spend way too much time. Voila. Yep, that's pretty much it. So this is the first drawing table I really ever owned. In fact, I actually drew my entire Let Me Fix This series on this desk. Honestly, I kind of moved away from using it as a drawing table, and now it's just for editing. So yeah, I do all my video editing, all my reference editing, all my social media content, all the stuff on this MacBook right here, and maybe a little bit on the iPad. This is my hard drive that has literally everything on it. If I lost this hard drive, I would immediately retire. We're in front of a window in case we wanna get some natural sunlight in. Eh, I'm more of a studio lighting kind of guy. Hence why I'm so pale. And I get a lot of comments on mainly TikTok saying I look like Edward Cullen. And I can't even be mad at that, to be honest. I'm gonna move you guys down to the chair. This is all reliable right here. When I first bought this chair, it was the most uncomfortable, hurting chair that I've ever sat on in my life. And you can see we made some minor upgrades to it. Took it to the mod bench. So whenever I'm editing or I'm sitting down and drawing, I'm decaying in this chair, but it's a lot better than what it was. So I did mention that I used to draw on this. There were times where I actually would draw on my actual drawing table that I use right now that's behind you. And then I would also have a drawing going on here. But I quickly realized that with as much editing that I do with all this content, I really needed a space that was charcoal free. It's so hard to keep anything clean in here with all the charcoal. So I really just wanted a little section where there's no charcoal, no drawing involved. I can just have, you know, some expensive tech and a place to kind of do the, the marketing side of the process. What am I working on right now? I'm actually currently working on the next drawing reference and you guys can't see that. However, if you want a preview, head over to the Patreon where I give exclusive behind the scenes coverage. But yeah, I do all Photoshop, all Premiere, basically all Adobe, anything on here. And then for the iPad, I honestly just use it for Procreate. And again, working on the uh, next reference for the next drawing, which you cannot see yet. Oh, and that is a fridge right there because I get really thirsty when I edit. It's just nice to have a little corner where I don't have to worry about charcoal. So that's the uh, editing station. Moving on, Oop, get the light source. <sighs> okay, okay, moving on to station number two, which is the print section. For the longest time, this corner of the studio was completely empty, but I quickly realized that I had so much stuff and nowhere to put anything. So I was like, okay, let's get a nice little filing cabinet slash working desk. I would go on Facebook Marketplace like four times a day, trying to find the perfect piece of furniture. And finally, this popped up. Down here, you can see we have some smaller print rolls. I use these for the uh, smaller size prints. Then we got my yardstick that I use for everything. I use this for all my grids. I use this for trimming or cutting any prints that I have to, along with this cutting board right here. These two go together quite a bit, but uh, speaking of, let's get you guys closer. Perfect. So up top, this is where I'll do all the packaging. So I got my cutting board right here that I just recently got. It's a life changer. I mainly use it for whenever I get prints from the print shop and the white border around, they're not cut to the peract length. So what I'll do is I'll grab the X-Acto knife. I will take this, then I'll just measure out on the print and then I'll just cut along. For smaller pieces of paper, we have this little cute cutter that I got from like Michael's. And then this ruler I got in elementary school, I think. I don't know. We got spare battery, lens cover, and a wireless remote for the camera that I'm using right now. But here's a little station. We have the little thank you cards that I send out with all my prints. My signature stamp that I don't use as much anymore because it actually bleeds through a lot of things and it takes like an hour to dry and I don't really have that kind of time when I'm packaging things. Uh, here's my embosser, press down. It uh, imprints my logo and I use that for COAs and uh, letters and stuff like that. And then over here, we got the notebooks. I highly, highly recommend and suggest to every artist to have a notebook near you at all times. We've got the classic Spidey Sense here. 
and I will write or draw on this every day. Whether it's an idea or concept that I have, or maybe it's the script to the next tutorial that I need to write down and memorize, or you know, tax stuff, you know, just everyday stuff in this notebook. And then here's my mini one I have. This is uh, that Moleskin, Moleskine company. This came free in like a pack I got, but it's really tiny, it fits in my pocket. And I take this everywhere when I have to have any type of meetings or anything, like going to the print shop and I have to write anything down. Basically, this is the notebook that I carry everywhere. And this is the one that stays in the studio. And yeah, when I'm gonna package a print, I will just clear everything off, get up here and start working. Okay, now let's look at the drawers. So when we open the first drawer up, we got just uh, typical shipping and other little accessories that go for printing, like tape, more tape, business cards, envelopes, stamps, COA covers, COAs, uh, a weight for packages, really nice gloves I use when handling prints, um, just kind of all the little knickknack type of stuff for prints. Let's move the light source over so we can see. Second, we got prints. Now I do put on my website that they're made to order, which is the case. I like to keep around one, maybe two of each print in this drawer, just so that uh, it saves me a lot of trips. So if you order a print and it ships out really quick, that means that it was one of these ones in this drawer. But if it takes like a week or two, that's because I didn't have any extra in the drawer and I had to go print them. They're nice and safe in here. This whole drawer is ventilated, so there's not like any trapped moisture or anything like that. Moving down to the third drawer, we just have probably the most boring drawer, just more packaging stuff, mailing tubes, some thicker ones for the big boys, some skinnier ones for some smaller boys, and a lot of museum archival paper. Really, really boring stuff. And then lastly, we got the originals. Now, whenever I'm done with a drawing, I like to get it framed and uh, safely secured, but this is kind of where they go when they're in limbo. Uh, as you can see in my most recent drawing here, um, it's just going to temporarily sit in there until I get a frame and whatnot for it. There's a room down the hall that I put all of the framed and completed pieces in for storage if they're like in between galleries and whatnot. Yeah, so this last drawer right here is original art purgatory. And there you have it. There is everything that is in my printing station. Then moving along, oh, down here we have just like a wired mess. This right here is a tripod for my phone and my iPad. Uh, it fits both, just depending on how you rotate this. Right down there is my own Wi-Fi for the studio because whenever I started streaming on Twitch, it required so much that I would get like maybe one frame per second. So that is my own Wi-Fi for the studio and I highly, highly, highly recommend getting it if you are going to try streaming because um, from my experience, it is impossible to do it without it. And then we move over. Now we're officially at the drawing station. So here's my drawing desk. You guys see it in the background of pretty much all my intros and outros from my videos. We got pretty much all the tools I currently use. And then out here are all the tools that I'm actively using, except this, I don't use this. This was from something on Patreon. But these are all the tools I actively use and I keep them out so they're you know easy access. I can rotate really quickly. Uh, usually right here, I have a ton of charcoal powder. This is where my little deposit is. We got literally hundreds of tortillons and blending stuff in here that I will never use, but I get too attached to things and I can't let them go because what if, even though I know I will never use them. And then just a bunch more supplies that I know I'll never use. We've got some tape here. I always highly recommend using painter's tape. I use the blue tape on paper that I'm not drawing on. So like a border or something, uh, cause it can tear sometimes. And then here is the purple painter's tape, which is known as the delicate surface painter's tape. I will use this if I'm going to remove it and then draw on that paper. This is my little buddy that I use as a reference for my uh, gray face drawing. And we just really bonded those couple months of drawing. So uh, I like to keep him out, get some advice from him if I need it. Uh, we got more rulers and some circle tracers. But yeah, that's literally everything I have on my drawing desk. I would say on a day-to-day -day basis, I just use these tools, the charcoal powder that's not here right now, and then the tape and maybe the roller. Everything else is just playing it safe. Let's not forget the lighting. We got these two huge studio lights. Um, I got them off Amazon, I think. They are HPUSN, I'm gonna to try to pronounce that. Hyper Photography and Utility Solution. Um, that seems very AI generated. And then moving on, we have the drawing desk. Take you guys off my mount. 
you can see this isn't even as tall as it goes and it's like almost as tall as me and I'm 6'3", I think. So it's huge. I've had so many people ask me where I got it from. And I kid you not, I have looked literally everywhere for some sort of branding on this thing. Flip you guys upside down. There's literally no branding at all on it. It's just a huge, huge drafting table. Got a kneel. Oh, did you hear my knees? But yeah, this desk is huge. It's everything that I could ever need. In fact, I usually do two projects at a time on it. So on this side, because it's closer to the desk, I will do whatever original drawing I'm working on. And then on this side, I'll either have a smaller commission going or all of the tutorials that we do, I do them on this side. Oh, can't forget the memory foam mat for your feet. I'm pretty sure this is just a kitchen mat that's used to go like right in front of the sink. Nevertheless, it's memory foam. It feels amazing on your feet. And if you're going to be standing while drawing, like I do, I cannot recommend this enough. And then, uh, oh, we have a visitor. Finn, Finn, come here. Hey, buddy. Hi, buddy. So by far the coolest thing in my studio, at least in my opinion, is the little contraption mount thing that I have going on up here. So let me move this desk down, which is also another amazing thing about this desk is that it can go the whole way down to here and go the whole way up here. You can lay it completely flat. You can do it completely vertical, but for now we're just gonna put it down. As you can see behind my desk, I have this literal two by four that is on these uh, adjustable height thingies. And basically I can pick up this two by four and I can put it at any height I want along those. And then I can just attach any mount that I want to. And it can be always looking over my drawing, no matter what height the desk is at. Shout out to my dad for helping me build it because I couldn't have done this myself. You're probably wondering who this is up here, just staring at you the whole time. This is Gregory. Focus on him, not me. Yeah, this is my boy Gregory named after Gregory from Over the Garden Wall. Basically, he was used as the reference point for my Misplaced Memory Part 1 drawing. Um, that's what this is right here. This is where I kind of first imagined the motherboard to be and kind of just used him as like a reference for lighting and just like a stand-in whenever I was behind the camera. And again, just like the skull, we just kind of bonded and um, he now looks over me whenever I draw. This cord right here is for connecting this camera to my laptop for Twitch. Now this mount right here was uh, originally bought for my iPad, but now I use it for my mirror. I use this mirror as kind of like a makeshift uh, face cam for uh, TikTok Live. This right here is a little uh, clamp that I use to clamp anything down I need to, typically my MacBook. For Twitch, I would set it up here to read the chat and I'm always scared that it's gonna fall off. So this clamp pretty much cements it into the two by four. Then this right here is my main mount. It is the Rode. It's the really nice one that pretty much everyone uses. I typically have it attached over on that end for uh, the original drawing that I'm working on. But right now I have it over here because I just recorded a tutorial. But yeah, it's super nice because like I said, I can just, loosen the mount and move it down or literally anywhere I want to. And yeah, a lot of people ask about this, kind of how I have my mount set up because I always have so much going on over top of the drawings. This is definitely the coolest thing in my studio and something that if you're interested, you can look into it because it's kind of DIY. Oh, also can't forget about this mount. Uh, this one goes on the actual desk and it's for my iPad. And I use it for reading chat during TikTok Live. Now, as far as the walls go, like I said, we have this window here that is never open. Um, you can see over here, I don't know if you saw it, I have a little thank you card from my local school where I went in and I talked to the students about my time there and kind of what I do, try to you know inspire them a little bit. So that's literally the only thing that I have on my walls except for the mount. A lot of people ask, why don't you put your art, like your finished drawings on the wall? And I don't really have a good answer for that other than I just like it looking clean. And um, because the studio isn't that big itself, so um, I feel like having the walls empty makes it look a little more spacious. But yeah, I hope you liked the video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this that aren't tutorial based. I figured I'd like alternate between like non-tutorial and tutorial video. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you want to see daily updates on everything. I also try to go live on TikTok every weeknight around 12 a.m. Eastern time. So come stop by and say hello. If you want one-on-one -on -one feedback for your artwork and you want to get these videos one week early, head over to my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Hopefully we will see you soon.